Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today is Wednesday, therefore it's time for this week's episode of Dear Nero, which of course is the weekly series here on my channel where you guys send me in fan mail and or fan questions, and I do my best to answer them for you guys. So this week I figured we would go back to some more rapid fire responses, you know sometimes they're really long, sometimes really short, uh, sometimes there's so many questions that get sent in that it's better to do it kind of like a rapid fire pace, you know, don't really spend too long on each question, just try and answer as many as possible. And I figured that's what we're going to do for this week's episode. The gameplay this week, I don't have a ton. <laughs> I don't have a ton. I've, I've re-fallen in love with the addiction that is Borderlands 2 for me. And there's all this new Headhunter DLC that I was yet to play. And we're playing that. And I'm trying to get up to level 72. And oh god, it's... It's a whole ordeal, and uh, I can't use any Borderlands 2 gameplay for this week's Dear Nero because all the stuff I'm recording is for like a Let's Play live session thing with my friends, and so all their voices would be on the audio, and that uh, would be bad. If you guys like to see some Borderlands 2 gameplay, let me know. Maybe next week's Dear Nero, I can record some solo stuff with Creek of Psycho. We can have some Borderlands 2 gameplay, but if you're interested in Borderlands 2, head on over to Nero's Let's Plays, my Let's Play channel. There's a link in the description there. And you guys can see us go through the new DLCs or the new Headhunter stuff that I've been yet to play. But so the gameplay we're watching today is basically going to be just mushed all together. It's going to be like a bunch of Black Ops 2 and World of War and maybe some Battlefield 4. I don't know what the gameplay is going to be. I'm going to throw it all in there, just mush it all in for you guys, and hopefully you guys will enjoy that. But all that aside, let's start doing this week's episode of Dear Nero. So we're going to start with the first question. He's going to write... Dear Nero, I am trying to decide between the PS4 or the Xbox One. I would prefer to buy an Xbox One because I like its exclusives better, but with the amount of hate that it gets, it just makes me think. Anyway, could you tell me why you bought an Xbox One? Thanks, Nathan from Limerick, Ireland. Alright, Nathan. So, I, like I said, rapid fire responses, but this one, the first question, might take a little bit longer to answer. So, Xbox One versus PS4, what should you buy? I bought the Xbox One, and I made many videos talking about it. My entire theory going into it was, it doesn't matter. It just does not matter. Xbox One versus PS4 does not matter at all. People are always talking about the capabilities of each console. Oh, the PlayStation's got this much dedicated something RAM versus the Xbox, which uses this kind of RAM, and this, that, and the other. Basically, they perform the freaking same. Just about. And I said this, you know, like eight months before the consoles came out, I was like, guys... People are going to buy what they already have. If you're a 360 user, chances are you're going to go up to the Xbox One. If you're a PlayStation 3 user, chances are you can go up to the PS4. And for the most part, I was right. right? That, for the most part, that's accurate. And I might make another video going more in depth with that. But what, which one should you buy? Neither. <laughs> there's really... At this point in time, at this point in time, in April of 2014, there's really no real reason to own either console right now. There's just no reason. There's not that many games out. It costs a lot of money. You probably have way more games on your prior console. And truth be told, I play my 360 more than I play my Xbox One. That's just the thing. So... If I had to recommend a console, I'd recommend getting the one that you already have. If you're a PS3 guy, get the PS4. If you're an Xbox 360 guy, get an Xbox One, right? That's why I would recommend. But I don't recommend you even buying either one right now. There's really no need to. There's not that many games out. You know, the stuff half the stuff doesn't work, right? Like if you're a PlayStation guy, you can't even record, you know, if you, on the PS4 without getting some kind of strippers and stuff like that. The Xbox One, it it's okay, I guess, but there's really nothing, there's no real reason to invest $500 right now. There's no need for it yet, so save your money for now, man. Save your money. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you think Sledgehammer will make a better Call of Duty than Treyarch? From Hexagon. So will Sledgehammer just come in and do better than Treyarch? So I don't think that's going to happen. To me, Treyarch is the best Call of Duty developer. I like them way more than I like Infinity Ward. It's my personal opinion. Some people like Infinity Ward more, but I don't see how that can be possible. But still, Treyarch's my favorite developer. Do I think Sledgehammer can make a better game? They might. They have the ability to, I guess, maybe. But will they? Probably not. I'm going into the next Call of Duty with very, 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 very low expectations. I'm not expecting the world because you'll probably be disappointed. Just... It's, it's Sledgehammer Games. They've only worked on one Call of Duty game, and they didn't even develop it by themselves. They were working with Infinity Board. It was like Infinity Board and Sledgehammer made Modern Warfare 3, which if you guys follow my channel, you guys know my opinion that Modern Warfare 3 was the worst Call of Duty for me. Didn't like it at all. So they co-developed the worst Call of Duty, in my opinion, and that's all they've done. They have no real track record 
So there's no reason to get hyped over the next Call of Duty game. You have no idea what it's going to be like. Hopefully it'll be good though. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I'm planning on buying the Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition and I cannot decide on which of the six classes to choose. Michael from California. So Michael, I want to say this before you get into this whole Borderlands 2 Game of the Year Edition. The Game of the Year Edition comes with like basically a season pass and it'll get you the big DLC. Not the little DLC, but the big DLC. You'll get the Sir Hammerlock DLC, the Mr. Torque DLC, and the Tiny Tina DLC, and the Captain Scarlet DLC with that, but you will not get any of the five Headhunter DLCs, but they're all really cheap. They're like $2.99 for each one of the Headhunter DLCs. You can get between half an hour to an hour's worth of gameplay out of each one. To me, it's worth it. To me, the ones I've played so far, the Headhunter DLCs, hilarious, funny, good loot, good monsters, new environments. It's all great, so I, I recommend getting the, uh, the Headhunter DLC. But what character do you want to use? So here's my experience. So if you're playing by yourself, Axton the Commando is pretty freaking good to play by yourself with. Like you, the, the abilities you get with your turret, good stuff. You can do pretty well with Axton the Commando. I think he's probably the easiest to use if you're playing by yourself. If you're playing with friends, I play as Craig the Psycho, and he goes nuts. He might even be pretty good for solo, but he goes nuts uh, with his Buzz Axe Rampage, and you just melee all the people. So if you want a gun person, run Axton. If you want a melee, run Craig. If you're playing with a bunch of other friends, you can really use whatever you want. You can use the Gunzerker, which I, I have no real experience with the Gunzerker, so I hear the Gunzerker's pretty good. You can try him out, but I've never actually played with him, so I can't really tell you. But from my experience of people that I've gotten up to level 61 or higher, Axton is really good. And Craig is very good. I think they could both work uh, for solo play. It completely depends on what you want to do. If you want to be a gun person, run Axton. If you want to be a melee person, run Craig. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, in a recent Dear Nero, you said you hated all pork. In this part's in all caps. But what about bacon? <laughs> John from Georgia. So John, I, I, I disagree with the whole internet. I don't like bacon. I think it's awful. And I think it's terrible. And I don't understand this entire meme around bacon being the greatest thing ever because it sucks to me. I don't like it at all. Hate bacon. Unsubscribe if you will, but I don't like bacon. Next question he writes, Dear Nero, would you rather automatically have 1,000 likes or 1,000 views on every video you upload? And this person did not leave his or her name. So would I rather have a thousand likes the moment I upload the video or a thousand views? I would rather have a thousand views, and here's why. So my channel itself is basically ran off long tail. You guys may have heard me use that word before, long tail. Uh, basically what that means is videos I upload, they do okay, and they gather a bunch of views over time, right? That's long tail. The views you get over time is what people refer to as long tail. Uh, for me, I've gotten a lot of long tail. Without the help of likes. Like you look at any of my most popular videos. I don't think I've. I've never gotten a video over 5,000 likes. I don't think. Ever. Ever in my over 1,000 uploads on this channel. Or the 500 videos on my other channel. Never had a video with over 5,000 likes. And yet they continue to get views. And the whole point of a like is it bumps you up in the search bar. And it can help people find your video and such. I can do that regardless. Without the help of likes. So I'd rather have the 1,000 views. Because at the end of the day. Views are what counts. Right? So, I guess 1,000 views. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, I'm wondering if you have heard about the new Snoop Dogg voiceover micro DLC coming to Call of Duty Ghost, Mike from Utah. So, Mike, I have seen that. Uh, <laughs> that DLC looks pretty cool. I'm going to check out most of it. You know, the last DLC of Call of Duty Ghost I was super disappointed by, but this is stuff that can't disappoint you. It is microtransactions. It's weapon camos, although there's a weed camo, which is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever heard of. Let's pander to everybody with our weed camo. Um, but the Snoop Dogg thing, that'd be kind of funny. I think it'd be interesting. I think the other one is actually going to be Gunny Hartman. I, they didn't really show a video. Or I haven't seen any videos on it of the other voice DLC where it's going to change your in-game announcer. I think it's going to be Gunny Hartman from Full Metal Jacket. If you guys have ever seen Full Metal Jacket, that stuff is hilarious. The Drill Sergeant is so funny. And I'm really hoping that that's the voice character. But the Snoop Dogg thing, that's kind of cool. Uh, there's a bunch of new camos. Those would be pretty cool. I'll be checking those out. Except for the weed camo because it's fucking stupid. But, yeah, I think it'll be pretty cool, and I'm looking forward to it. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, have you played any sports? And if so, what sports? Darian from Canada. So, Darian, I hope I pronounced your name right. Uh, growing up, I played soccer, which might be considered football to people not in America. I also played baseball, and then towards middle school, I played basketball and ran track. And then high school, I played football. I also played a bit of football in middle school as well. So, American football. So, I played a bunch of sports throughout my life. Next question, he writes, 
Dear Nero, what do you think is the most difficult chem strike, Moab, or nuke that you have ever achieved in Call of Duty? Enjoy the Wednesday, Galen from New York. So Galen, hmm. I actually had to think a while when I when I wrote I took the question from the inbox and I put it into this text document. Um, the hardest chem strike Moab or nuke I've ever gotten. I'm gonna say it was one of my striker chem not chem strikes, one of my striker Moabs in Modern Warfare 3. And the striker itself, right? Great shotgun, super powerful shotgun, really good all the time. But man, it's a shotgun. You know, as good as a striker is, close range, shit. It's not going to do anything. <laughs> you kind of like a medium or a longer range, and everyone knows in Modern Warfare 3, you know, those ACRs and MP7s around every corner, they will drop you in, you know, three or four shots at any range. And so it'd be for me to be able to get a couple Moabs with only a shotgun, I thought that was pretty cool. So I guess that would be my most difficult one, because doing well with a shotgun is pretty hard in any game, really. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, I have seen how you haven't played GTA 5 in a while, so I was wondering, will you play more GTA 5 whenever heists come out? This person did not leave his or her name. So, okay, so GTA 5. <laughs> I don't want, I'm trying to do quick answers here, but I could go on for days about the scumbags that work at Rockstar. So do you guys remember the launch trailers before the game was out? New GTA 5 online, it's going to be so cool in this awesome online stock market. And you can do heists with your friends and rob banks and stuff. Where the hell are either one of those? I mean, really? Really? What, how many months ago did GTA 5 come out? There is still not a heist and there is still not a stock market. Really? Really? I bought that game for that reason. <laughs> I don't care about the single player. I tried doing a Let's Play a single player, but it bored me to death, so I stopped it. And GTA 5 Online, like, I played around with it a bit, but how many times can you pick up your friends with, with a cargo bob and drag them around? You know, I mean, the game lost its luster for me really quickly. And the heist and the stock market and all this other stuff that could possibly get me back into it are still not there. Like, let's see, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, seven months! After the game came out. And they're not freaking Rockstar. If they didn't make Red Dead Redemption, I would love I would have just like sworn off of that company because if there's ever a Red Dead 2, I'll jump all over it and fanboy all over it. But still, GTA 5, for me, eh. Real disappointment. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, what was your first first person shooter or shooter game? Have a wonderful day, Jamie from Ireland. So Jamie, my first FPS game, I'm it's one of the Medal of Honor games on PS2, and the one that keeps coming to my mind is Medal of Honor European Assault. And so I'm going to go with that as my answer. I'm fairly positive. Medal of Honor European Assault. Next question, he writes. Dear Nero, if there were to be another World War II set Call of Duty, would you like it to be an HD remake of World at War or a different game entirely? And this person did not leave his or her name. That's a good question. That's a damn good question. And after much thought... In much thinking, in much smartness, I decided to go with a brand new World War II game. So, as much as I love World at War, as much as I love World at War, man, to play a whole year, let's say the next Call of Duty game, for whatever reason, Sledgehammer remakes a World War II game, right? And and they and they were to remake World at War, you know, Call of Duty 5, as the next Call of Duty game. How long could that really stay interesting, you know? Because, like, I've been playing World at War... For six years <laughs> now, off and on, six years. The game came out in 2008, man. So it's like if they were if they were to do an HD remake, the graphics would be a bit fancier. There'd be no God mode glitches and whatnot. But it'd still be the same game that I've been playing for what what I say 2008 to six years, right? And I think a new World War II experience would be better than HD remake of World of War. If they were to ever do HD remakes of Call of Duty 4 or World of War, I would love for them to come out maybe six months after a Call of Duty, like, let's say a new Infinity War game comes out, or a new Treyarch game, or a new Sledgehammer game, a new, let's say six months after the new Sledgehammer game comes out, they in introduce this, you know, COD 4 Remastered. That'd be a good time to do it, because six months after the game's out, people are kind of losing interest, people are trying other games and stuff, so to do that, it'd be cool, but for a standalone title for one straight year, would there be an HD remake? That would be kind of tough, even for someone like me that loves those games to death. So I'd like a new World War II shooter altogether. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, if you could bring back any past Call of Duty, back with better graphics and fixed bugs, what would you want? John from Georgia. So John from Georgia, that completely ties into the last question. I didn't even realize it when I was copying and pasting these into my folder here. But uh, which, which Call of Duty game would I bring back with better graphics and fixed bugs? And you're, I'm like, you guys are thinking, you guys are thinking in your heads, you know my answer. 
But my answer will be Modern Warfare 2. Not Call of Duty 4, not World at War. As much as I love those games, Modern Warfare 2 is a really good game. Like, it's a super damn good game. So this new game that they were to bring back, right, in, in this hypothetical situation, they bring back this game. Part of the deal is that grenade launchers and the damage from grenade launchers get nerfed to the point that they shoot marshmallows. Literally, they shoot marshmallows that don't even hurt. They don't even do damage. They only shoot marshmallows. Danger Close is removed from the game. Commando is nerfed down to nothingness. Like, it, basically what Commando will do will give you, like, maybe an extra inch or two of knife range. And then we have a freaking awesome game right there with tons of fun kill streaks and just, oh, that would be so good, right? That game would be really freaking good if what I just said were to happen. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, Modern Warfare 3 vs. Dead Island Riptide. I remember in a recent video you said how much you hated Dead Island Riptide, and I thought, Modern Warfare 3, <laughs> which is better? Tony from New York. So Tony, that's really the lesser of two evils here. What would I go with? As much as it pains me to say if I had, if I were, for let's say in this situation, I'm forced to play one of these two games for a month straight. It's the only game I can play. I think I would pick Modern Warfare 3. Because it's, it's, as much as I don't like it, it's still a Call of Duty game. Like, a Call of Duty game I don't like still ranks higher than other games I don't like. Because I like Call of Duty, you know. As much as, you know, Modern Warfare 3 was frustrating for me. Annoying to me. It made me lose sleep. Blood, sweat, and tears. But still, it's still a Call of Duty game. And I, I still like it more than games like Dead Island Riptide or GTA 5. Like, if I had to choose between GTA 5 and Modern Warfare 3, I'd play Modern Warfare 3. Because it's still a Call of Duty it's just not as good as the other Call of Duties. Get, get what I'm saying? It's 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 a bad Call of Duty game, but a bad Call of Duty game to me is still better than most other games. So, that's my opinion on that. I'm a big COD fanboy. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do you use any controller mods like Scuff Controllers or Control Freaks? P.S. You're my favorite YouTuber, and this person did not leave his or her name. So, do I use controller mods? No. No, no. I don't like that whole pay-to-win system people are really trying to, really trying to implement into their Call of Duty game. Like, oh boy, look, I can jump and stuff with my special controller. Oh, look, my sensitivity is all super high because I got my fancy controller. I, why, do, why do people cheat? You know, back in my day, modded controllers that weren't stock controllers were looked down upon. People were like, wow, really? You paid for a modded controller? But now it's like, oh boy, everybody has them. Yay, scuffs. It's pitiful. It's really, really, really pitiful. Don't like it at all. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, would you buy Bungie, creator of Halo's, next game, Destiny? It releases September 9th. Thanks, Yao Bean. So Yao Bean, that's a cool name. Uh, will I be buying uh, Destiny? No. I only know what Destiny is. I have no interest in it. They, as soon as I heard Bungie, I'm like, ah, so it's going to be like some futuristic Halo. And it's supposed to be like an RPG, right? I don't know. I have no interest in it. Because it, as soon as I heard like MMO... I'm like, Elder Scrolls Online is going to be my MMO, so I don't even care about these other ones. And so I've even really looked into it, man. I really have no interest in Destiny at all. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, what were your favorite games on the PlayStation 2 when you had it? Joakim from Sweden. So Joakim, I would say my favorite games on the PS2 were these SmackDown games. So you guys may, these are really old. So <laughs> after these came like the SmackDown vs. Raw games. This was before that. This is wrestling, WWE stuff, by the way. They were just called SmackDown and SmackDown 2. I liked both of those games. I think SmackDown 2 was my favorite. Uh, I used to be really big into wrestling back in like the Attitude Era, back when like The Rock and Stone Cold and, you know, uh, Kane and The Undertaker and all those people were there. But now, I, I don't know. So, so many people I used to watch in wrestling don't wrestle for the WWE anymore. So I was like, eh, I kind of like stopped watching when I was like 16 or 17. Next question, he writes, Dear Nero, do the skill levels of other teammates actually affect a player's performance in Call of Duty? If so, how does your performance differ when you play solo versus when you play with a party with Foxhound, Cypher, and the rest of your friends? Josh from North Carolina. So Josh, let's see here. So the basis of the question is how does my play style change or how does the level of my teammates affect my performance? So I'm playing solo... My performance can do one of two things. I can do worse than I usually would because I don't have people around, like I don't have friends, you know, helping me take objectives. I don't have friends, you know, using you know, support kill streaks like we usually do, or you know, things like that. So it can either it can either make me do worse or I do ridiculously better. See, it's a double-edged sword. See, there's a blade on each end there when you're playing by yourself. So basically, on one end, 
you could do worse because your teammates are really bad and you're really having trouble. The other team is clearly better than your teammates and you're going to have a lot of difficulty. But on the flip side of that sword, if the enemy team isn't very good and your teammates aren't very good, that's a recipe for success right there. That's how you find yourself a lot of those 100 plus gameplays and a lot of those you know quadruple chem strike things and stuff like that is the enemy team is bad and your teammates are even worse. So your teammates aren't taking any of your kills and basically you just run in and you just kill everybody. And at the end of the game, you have like 100 kills and everyone else in the lobby has like 10 to 12. Yeah, that's how those gameplays happen. I do prefer playing with my friends. Uh, one, because you know it's a social game for me anyway. You, you get to talk to your friends, you get to play. It's a lot more fun when you're playing with people you know and you like. But uh, like I talked about a few videos ago, it's a bit difficult to get really good scores for me anyway in Call of Duty Ghosts while I'm playing with my friends. And I guess the same goes for all Call of Duty games because when you're playing with your friends, they're all good too. I mean, it's not, it's not like the situation we described earlier where you're just this alpha male and you're tearing up everybody in the lobby and everyone else in the lobby is like a baby buffalo just walking around. But I'm playing with my friends, we're all pretty good. And so we're all kind of fighting for kills. And so for me to kind of distance myself from them is sometimes pretty difficult to actually pull off. So uh, how my play style changes. When I play with my friends, I don't you know, necessarily need to play the objective as hard and I can focus a little bit more on kills and it's a bit easier. But at the same time, it's sometimes harder to get gameplay, believe it or not, for my YouTube channel while I'm playing with my friends as compared to when I'm playing solo. So uh, I, I still prefer playing with my friends. A lot more fun. Next and final question he's going to write, Dear Nero. On the last Dear Nero, you said that you started playing Hearthstone. So my questions are, what are your favorite heroes? And what is your opinion on the pay-to-win factor in Hearthstone? Jonathan from New York. So Jonathan, let's start by saying the only hero I've ever really had any success in Hearthstone with is the Hunter. I like the Hunter a lot. I've got a really good Hunter deck that I do pretty well with in ranked and against my friends and such. Uh, basically, the whole point of my deck is to summon as many beasts as humanly possible and just blitz them to death and that's kind of what i do and i have a couple of really strong taunt cards that they have to focus on while all my low level beasts continue to you know attack at their hit points and stuff um i like it i like it a lot I'm, try I'm trying to get like i like it so much that i actually take all the other heroes and i just get rid of their cards because i've tried all the heroes and i don't like really any of them besides the hunter and so i get rid of like all their cards trying to make enough dust so i can get the legendary i think it's called king crush which is an 8-8 card with charge, uh, which is just freaking crazy, which is a legendary for the Hunter deck. I'm trying to get him. But uh, the pay-to-win factor in Hearthstone, so I really don't think the game itself is pay-to-win. I would like to see an easier way to get gold. You know, If, if Hearthstone's a game you want to play a lot of and you don't want to you know, pay money into it, it is kind of hard to get gold. You, know? you get 10 gold. For you guys that don't play Hearthstone, gold is how you buy packs. It costs 100 gold to buy a pack. You get 10 gold for every three wins you get. And these matches can take about 10 minutes apiece. So half an hour, you can get 10 gold. Half an hour times 10 is... God, no, I'm going to do math. That's 300 minutes, so 6, 12, 18, 24... Is that five hours of gameplay for a pack? Did I do that math right? Let me know in the comments I do my math right. Please let me have done my math right. So that one sounds stupid. But then again, I never claimed to be good at math, so it's okay. So yeah, it takes a long time. To get gold that way but they also implement daily challenges but you only get one daily challenge and that daily challenge if you complete it will give you 40 gold so you know even if you win three games and do your challenge while doing that you have 50 gold it's enough for half a pack and mind you packs only have five cards in them so i wouldn't say it's pay to win but it's definitely hard to get packs without buying them now what i do is i like to do challenges off and on like i'll check and see what challenges are for that day and if if it's an easy one i'll go and do it and instead of buying a pack at 100 gold go up to 150 and go play the arena because in the arena depending on how well you do like no matter what you can go 0 and 3 in the arena and you'll still get uh, a pack of cards out of that so i recommend going to arena and not buying the packs because in the arena if you do really well and you go on kind of like a little win streak you can get multiple packs and you know you end up saving yourself some gold that way but i feel as though that was really long-winded but i don't think hearthstone's actually pay to win i really don't think it's pay to win because most of the cards that are really 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 good uh, aside from like legendaries and stuff you can just get from leveling up that hero so hearthstone's a fun game i recommend you guys trying it out it's a free-to-play game i'm sure you guys have heard of it uh, watch a video on it it's a card game it's it's pretty fun it's pretty fun stuff but i hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of dear nero i'm running out of time here don't want this video to be too long it's gonna be going up a little bit later than usual because we record a bunch of borderlands 2 earlier so <laughs> 
that's probably why my voice is kind of shy. And this ain't helping making a long deer near like this. Well, I guess it's not too long, but it's not short. I guess this, I guess this might be an average length for deer near. But either way, I hope you guys all enjoyed this episode of deer near. And if you did, please be sure to leave a rating where you guys feel to be deserves. And of course, like I say every week, if you guys like to have your guys' questions featured on next week's episode of deer near, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. Make the title message deer Nero. If it's a good question, an entertaining question, and above all, a question I have not yet answered before, I will do my best to go ahead and answer it in next week's episode. Hope you guys all enjoyed this episode. Remember to rate the video. Hope you guys all have a wonderful day.